Hallelujah for the new months. I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord enrich your life. The Lord bless you in this new month. And the 2020 promise become established in your life this month in Jesus' name. Oh, bless me. I said, It will bless me. I'll keep on walking in the path of blessing. I've lost my congregation. You'll keep on walking in the path of blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. And every word of God will be yes and amen in your life. Amen. The promises, the prophecies, amen. the mercy of the Lord, amen. the goodness of the Lord, the benefit of Calvary. The yes and amen in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. This year will be totally different from every other year. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for the worship service. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the liberty we have in your presence. We're asking, oh Lord, you will break every chain and you will break all the shackles and all the fetters you'll put asunder in Jesus' name. And we pray you'll be magnified in every life, magnified in every family, magnified in every minister. And I pray, Lord, this will be a glorious, gracious, great year for everyone in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church of the living God said, Amen. Thank you very much. You can see now we're coming to Job chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 4. Job chapter 33, we're looking at verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Think about that. I've been reading about a lot of things in Job. That is in the book of Job. But now, it tells us very clearly that these people, the three friends, they had their faults, and Job had his own misconception, and Elihu had his own understanding, a man of, you know, different opinions, and it was full of matter. But there is something we want to get out of the book of Job, and this is the fact that they all acknowledged the existence of God. There is no atheism in Job. There is no atheism in any of the chapters of Job. As you look at Job, whatever they said, however they said it, from whatever direction they were coming, here is one thing they believed. They believed in the existence of God. In fact, Elijah now said, the Spirit of God has made me. And then he said, the breath of the Almighty has given me life. The existence of God, the greatness of God, the power of God, the creative nature and the creative power of the Almighty God. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, Behold, I am according to thy wishing. God said, look at this, look at this. I also am formed out of the clay look at that knowledge of the word of god of the creation of man he said i also adam made of clay and the false man made of clay i also i am made of clay for you to understand that that is not a solitary understanding about god i'm coming to job chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 17 job chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 17 it says in verse 17 shall mortal man be more just than god shall a man be more pure than his maker is saying man 
any man, mortal man, any man, anywhere, any man, in any generation, there is something you know about that God. He is the maker of man. He is the creator of man. It tells us in Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10, looking at verses 8 and 9. Job chapter 10, reading from the first part of verse 8. Thine hands have made me and fashioned me together round about. Your hands have made me, no doubt. They all believed in the powerful creative power of the almighty God. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Look at verse 9. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay. You have made me. You made me from clay. I didn't just come when you created all the other things. You said, let there be and there was. Let there be and there was. When it came to the creation of man, you used your hand, you used the clay, and you formed me. And thou your breath has given me life. Chapter 31 of Job. In Job chapter 31, I'm reading from verse 15. Job chapter 31, verse 15. Did not he make, did he not that made me in the warm make him? Here is Job saying, you know, no man came here by himself. He that made me the Almighty. Is the same one that made him my neighbor. Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did he did not fashion us himself, myself, myself, and yourself. Did he did not fashion us in the womb? The understanding that God is creator. The understanding is so mighty and is so great, he created all things. Chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 22. Chapter 32, verse 22, for I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker is my creator. My maker is the one that formed me, my maker. Is the one that made me my maker would soon take me away. Look at chapter 35, we're reading from verse 10. Chapter 35, verse 10. But none says, where is God my maker? They're all searching for this and searching for that. And they do not come in the presence of the Lord to say, where is my maker who gives songs in the night? He has not abandoned us after he created us. He gives us songs. He gives us joy. He gives us happiness. He gives us all the good things of life. He is our maker. He is our creator. Chapter 36 of Job. And we're reading from verse 3. 36 of Job. Looking at verse 3. I will fetch my knowledge from a farm. And will ascribe righteousness to my maker. I will fetch my knowledge not from nearby current affairs, the papers, the radios, and the things we hear around. And the blasphemies were here all around and not make that the basis of my knowledge. From far away, from heaven, I will get my knowledge. I will fetch my knowledge from afar. And I will ascribe righteousness, holiness, purity. I will ascribe righteousness unto my maker. Look at Job chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 15. Job chapter 40. We're reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, Behold now, behemoth, which I have, which I made, was thee. And, the, and he eateth grass as an ox. Here God now begins to talk. All the others have spoken. And they all spoke with one voice, united voice, that God is the maker. Especially man, 
God is the maker of man. He is the creator. The Almighty now comes in majesty. The Almighty now comes in glory. The Almighty now, now comes with authority. And he says, Job, stand up and buckle up. And if you can answer me, answer this one. And God said, Behold, now the behemoth which I made was thee. I made you, I made him. I made you, I made all things. It tells us in that same chapter 40, verse 19. In verse 19, he is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him. He that made him can make a sword to approach unto him. There's something we we'll see in the book of Job that whatever you have learned, whatever you have studied, whatever you have read, you come to this final understanding that God is the maker and the creator of man. Today, we're looking at the message, acknowledging God as our maker and creator. Acknowledging, knowing that God is our maker and creator. And worshiping him as our maker and creator. And giving him the honor. Because without him, we will not be existing here on earth. Thinking about him, loving him, learning about him worshiping him, acknowledging him every time, everywhere, anywhere we go, whatever may be happening, acknowledging God as our maker and creator. Three things we're looking at in the message today. Number one, the purposeful creation of man in God's likeness. When God created man, he did it on purpose. He did it for a reason, and you need to know that purpose. And so that you, as a creature of God, so that you, as somebody that came out of the molding, creative hand of the Almighty God, you will fulfill the purpose of your being made, being created by God. Number one, the purposeful creation of man in God's likeness. Number two, the painful corruption of man and his godless living. The painful corruption of man. The image of God in which man was created became polluted, became corrupted, and it grieved the almighty God in his heart that he had made man upon the earth the painful corruption of man and his godless living. Point number three, the powerful conversion. Our Lord Jesus Christ will not, remain, will not allow man to remain in corruption. Our almighty God himself, because he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The almighty God will not make, will not allow man to remain in that corruption, in that evil. And therefore he sent the Lord Jesus Christ. And even though we had had the painful corruption, now Christ came. And there is a powerful conversion of man into a glorious liberty. There is the, there's a powerful uh, conversion of man into a glorious liberty. That the same life man had originally. And the same holiness that man had originally. And the same health. And the same protection. And the same dominion. And the same power. And the same authority that man had originally, the same liberty to have all his power, authority on the whole of creation that man had originally, Christ came so that there will be conversion, total conversion, transparent conversion, a kind of conversion that leads us back into the victory that we had originally, the powerful conversion of man into a glorious liberty. May God open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds, 
and develop her faith to know what we have now in Christ. And this that we have in Christ, and this that we have through conversion, and this that we have through the hand of the Lord touching us, transforming us, equipping us, lifting us up, making us anew, recreating us, that all this benefit from Calvary, from the cross, will be yours, will be mine, will be ours together, in Jesus' name. New month, amen. Yeah. New year, amen. Yeah. A new creation, amen. Yeah. Number one, the purposeful creation of man in God's likeness. We're coming to Genesis chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 26. Genesis chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, at our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. What a privilege, and what a creation, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. You understand what God was doing. You understand the purpose and the plan of God. You understand the reason why he created man. He had been living from all eternity. And there was uh, no one that created him. All eternity, everlasting to everlasting, God has been God. He is infinite. He is unfathomable. And you cannot fully understand him. And now he said, let us... Father, Son, Holy Ghost, let us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, let us create man in our image, after our likeness, the holiness of God. He wanted to reproduce that in man. The purity of God, he wanted to, to reproduce that in man. The dominion and the power of God, he wanted to reproduce that in man. Let us make man, man that will not be defeated, man that will not be sinful, man that will not be overcome, man that will have authority and power, holiness in the mind, holiness in the heart, purity everywhere. Let us create man, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. That dominion is coming back. That authority is coming back. That confidence is coming back. Man was created in such a way that as God was holy, he was holy too. As God was righteous, he was righteous too. As God was mighty and powerful, he was mighty and powerful too. Uh, look at uh, Genesis chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, God created man, God created man. Angels did not create man. Evolution that, you know, the liars from Darwin spoke about, evolution did not create man. God Almighty, God in his power, God in his authority, God in his purpose, he created man. This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day, there was a day, uh, there are people that will say that, you know, man was evolving over many, many years. In fact, they say thousands of years. He was, you know, like a little atom, and then he evolved into another scene, and I can remember, and then I evolved to another scene, like just, um, you know, a little uh, seed. He evolved into another, until he became an ape. And then all the people that are living now, they are the offspring of ape. I am not an offspring of ape. 
uh, you know, when people need blood transfusion and they cannot, uh, you know, get somebody, they don't go to the apes to get some blood and to say, after all, those are our great, great grandfathers. So let us go to the ape to have some blood. When you need a replacement of a kidney, the replacement of any part of the body, they don't go to an ape and say, there are so many apes and there's nothing they're doing with those kidneys and those livers. Let's get out from them. But there was a day God created man. God created me. I say God created me. I am not an ape. I am not an animal. It says in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him in the likeness of God made he him uh, look at verse 2 there male and female created he them male and female created he them and he blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created it didn't just come up like you know a wild plant comes up in the day when they were created and you know god has dominion how many of us know that god has dominion and god has power and god when he created man look at some age some age i'm reading from verse four in some age look at what god did for man he did it for man at that time and Christ has come now and Christ is doing it for you. He'll do it for everyone in Jesus' name. Power. Somebody shout power. Dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Authority. Somebody shout authority. When Christ comes back into your life, and recreates you and he gives you everything we lost in Adam, there'll be authority in your life that man fearing spirit will be cast out of your life in jesus name there are people that live in total slavery because they do not understand the creation of god the way god has created us and then christ is coming back now to make that restoration restoration in my life i said restoration in my life restoration in your life in jesus name Psalm 8, I'm reading from verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Look at verse 5 there. In verse 5, it tells us, For thou hast made him a little lower than somebody there tell me. Angels, you know, angels are powerful. You are just a little lower than the angels. Angels are secured. You are just a little lower than angels. Angels have authority and dominion. And you are just a little lower than angels. Because he said, for thou almighty God, for thou powerful God, for thou creating God, has made him a little lower than angels and has crowned him somebody tell me with glory and honor this new year that glory will come back no shame in your life no shame or con confide in your life in jesus name nothing will trample on you nothing will trample you down nothing will walk on you you will rise up again like a mighty giant. I said you'll rise up again like a mighty giant. That power, that dominion original that the Lord gave when he created man, it will come into your life. You will walk straight. You will walk with confidence. You will walk with authority and nothing. Somebody help me shout nothing. Nothing will overcome you in Jesus' name. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and with honor. Look at verse 6. Thou madest him to have somebody there. Thou madest him to have. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands thou hast put thou hast put tell me 
That thing will not walk on your head anymore. That thing will not walk at your back anymore. That thing will not bow your head down anymore. You know, there are people that go through life and they do not understand that we who are children of God in Christ and through the cross, everything that Adam had at that time, the authority and the power, everything has come back. I said everything has come back. There have been people in the Bible and even in our own days that realize the dominion they had over the works of the hand of the Lord. Look at Elijah coming. And then he made a proclamation on the whole nation. He said, there will be no dew, there will be no rain. All these days, all these years, according to my word, he locked the heavens and went away with the key until he came back and he said, Oh, but I go tell your master Elijah is here. There's going to be the sound of the abundance of rain. When you open the heavens or the key again, the rain came down. There are people that there were people that knew that they had dominion. Here comes Joshua. And Joshua said, Son, it's your end. I'm here in a great battle. And you look too fast. You are going down. I need the light to conclude this battle. Sun, stay there. Moon, stay there. That man had authority. I said that man had authority. And there was a man, they came to arrest him, and they were going to take him to their foreign land because their king had said, go catch him and go arrest him. And they all came. And the servant of the man of God said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he said, Lord, open his eyes. The Lord will open your eyes. And then he saw the old chariots of fire around him. And the people came. They were right in front of the people they wanted to arrest. They had authority of man. He had authority from God. Which authority do you want? I said, which authority do you want? And he said, who are you looking for? They said, somebody called Elisha. He said, that's not the real person you're looking for, you see. I'll take you to the man you're looking for. And he said, Lord, while I'm getting ready to, you know, take them there, blindfold all of them. And the whole army of the Assyrians became blind. And he said, follow me. They followed the man they wanted to arrest. And then they got to, you know, the king of Israel. And he said, Lord, open their eyes now. And their eyes were opened. They found themselves in a strange place. And the king of Israel said, my father, my father, should I kill them? He said, don't kill them. If you kill them, they'll not tell, they'll not have a chance to tell their king who has authority and final dominion. Give them food. Let them eat. They ate and they went back and they told their king, they said, we saw dominion and authority. They never came back again. They will not come back again. Because it says thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Can I prophesy to your life? The Lord will put all enemies under your feet this year in Jesus' name. Hey, look at look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9, Hebrews chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 9, all this was fulfilled in Christ, that it might be fulfilled in us, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, it says in verse 9, but we see Jesus, we see, who do we see, who do you see? Jesus made a little lower than the angels in his incarnation for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and with honor, that he, that he, because of the suffering, that he, by the grace of God, might should taste death for 
Are you not there? For he has tasted your death. He has taken that death penalty away from you. In the day that you eat of that fruit, thou shalt surely die. That was the sentence for Adam. And then he ate and he died. And all his offsprings, they died. But now Christ has come. He has taken that death penalty away. Eternal death, you will not die. Death in hell, separation from God, you will not go there. Yeah. Premature death, you will not die before your time. Yeah. It says that it should taste death for every man, for it became him. For whom are all things, by whom are all things, this is verse 10 now, in bringing many sons unto glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. This is what Christ has done. But you want to understand that the original creation, it was creation in the power of God. It was creation in the might of God. It, it was a purposeful creation. I'm looking at Psalm 100 verse 3. Psalm 100, we're reading from verse 3. Know ye that... But Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, creator, maker. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Look at verse 4. That's why you enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his cause with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Is the Lord good to you? This year, things will be good better. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to how many generations? All generations. Psalm 139, Psalm 139. I'm reading from verse 14. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know how wonderful is a creation? Do you know how wonderful is uh, uh, the Lord that has made us think? Think about this now. From the primary school, you began to learn about man. But you couldn't go too far. You know, he has head, he has eyes, he has ears, he has mouth, he has hands, he has feet. You couldn't go too far. Then in the secondary school, high school, in the junior secondary and senior secondary, you began to learn in biology. And then you began to see the internal parts, the intestines, and all, you know, all those things, and the bones and the structure. And then you go to university, you're going to do medicine. And you're going to take four years and five years and seven years. You're still learning about man. And then you don't need to specialize now. You cannot even learn everything about man in seven years. You have to branch off to a special study and you're learning about a minute part and then you're still doing research and science has been there for all these many, many years and they're still having their medical journal, a new discovery about man. They have studied for years and years and years but they have not arrived at the final knowledge because I will praise the Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows very well. You are a marvel. I said you are a marvel. Why did God create such a marvel? Why did God put together such a marvel? The people who study man and people who study everything about man outside, inside, internal, and the mind and everything, they even have to break it up now. There's a normal medical science, there's psychology, there's physiology, there's this and that, and God has put all that together. Our God is great. Our God is mighty. 
a God is wonderful. He made you. He created you. And whatever is wrong in that body, even today, he'll fix it up. Uh, look at this, look at this. I'm looking at chapter 43 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 7. The purpose of the creation. The reason for the creation. The foundation for the creation. And the basis for the creation. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 43. And in verse 7, it says, even everyone. How many people? Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him. Satan did not create you, Satan will not possess you. Demons did not create you, demons will not possess you. Man, like yourself, did not create you, have at least somewhere, mighty power somewhere. They have not created you, they will not have any impact in your life in Jesus' name. And it says, everyone, everyone, even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him. Why? I said, why? Yeah, for the glory of God. Your life will glorify God. Your family will glorify, glorify God. I have formed him. Yeah, yes, I have made him. Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15 there it says, For I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. He has created us. He has created you. He created the whole of mankind and the whole of the nation of Israel and the whole of the church. Everyone here this morning, God created you. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, these people have I formed for myself. These people have I formed for myself. These people have I formed for myself. Who is that talking about? This person, I'm talking about you now, have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. They shall show forth the praise of God. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be glorified in your life. Look at the last book of the Bible, Revelation. Last book of the Bible, Revelation. I'm reading from chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 11. Chapter 4 of Revelation. And we're reading from verse 11. Look at this. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou, tell me, for thou, say it aloud, for thou, I said, say it aloud, has created how many people? How many things? That was created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and they were created. I am for the pleasure of the Almighty God, and for the joy of the Almighty God. I will please him. Somebody there, I will please him. I will glorify him. Every time God looks at me, say it, say it. Every time God looks at me, he will be happy that he made me. God will be happy at you. God will be happy at your life. God will be happy at the works of your hand. God will be happy at everything you achieve in Jesus' name. He is God, and he is the Almighty, and he's the one that has all power. He has enough power to create man, to create woman, to create everything and everybody, and that power will keep on working in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading here now from verse 26. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who has created these things. Lift up your eyes when it appears you are dejected. You are forgetting who you are, and you are looking down, and sorrow is taking the better part of you. And then you are singing the old song, sometimes in the valley, sometimes on the mountain, it's not an easy road. We're going to Zion. 
but the way is rough and then you cry a little christ do you care all my tears christ do you care all my problems stop your crying there's a new day stop all that weeping and stop all that sorrow lift up your eyes on high behold who has created these things that bringeth out their host by numbers he calleth them all by names by the great the greatness of his might for that he is strong in power our creator is strong in power our redeemer is strong in power not one failures you're going into this new year proper with the understanding that every promise of God he has made to you not one will fail look at verse 28 as thou not known you will know as thou not heard you are hearing it now that the everlasting God the Lord the creator the creator the creator of the ends of the earth faint is not neither you see weary there is no searching of his understanding and then it says he giveth power to the faith today he giveth power to the faith this new month he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might he increases strength even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the lord who is that they that wait upon the lord where are they they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength shall renew their strength you know i pity the people that come to church and after listening to the message, they listen to a message for, you know, more than one hour. And then after that, they're now to wait upon the Lord so that all the blessings and message will come to their lives. Then they're in a hurry. They go here. They go there. And when they go, you're surprised. Outside there, they're just talking. And instead of having strength, I will be wise. I will be wise when I listen to the message and I hear those prophecies and I hear those promises and I hear all those precepts and I hear of the grace of God, the might of God, the power of God. You wait on the Lord, you will renew your strength in Jesus' name. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk, they shall walk and not faint. You will not faint. This new year, all that fainting spirit cast out in Jesus' name. People will not cry over you. Mama, come. She has fainted again. God forbid. Papa, come. He has fainted again, God forbid. And then you come to church, and before, as we're going out, somebody is lost, and they, they say, everybody, come, come, come. He has fainted again. You will not faint this year. Because they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, eh, let, let, me, let me tell you this. We hear so much in deep and light Bible church. You come on a Sunday like this, it's almost like we're going to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation so that there'll be a revolution in your life. I said there'll be a revolution in your life. Then you come on Monday and we go through again. You come on Thursday, we go through again. And for those who are leaders, you come on Tuesday. For those who are workers, you come on Saturday. And we hear all that with everything we're hearing if we were to wait upon the lord there will be nobody that is feeble and weak among us but our fault is god will correct this fault i say god will correct this fault we hear of the almighty god 
we hear of the all-powerful God. We hear of the omnipotent God. We hear of the irresistible God. We hear of God that can do and will do all things in our lives. And we don't wait on him. We don't ask him. He has money. We don't ask him. He has healing. We don't ask him. He has deliverance. We don't ask him. He has dominion. We don't ask him. He has all that we need and we don't ask him. And we're so much in haste and a hurry. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. God created man in his own likeness. He created man in his own image. But let me show you this verse in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. We're reading from verse 29. Lo, this only have I found. Lo, this only have I discovered. Look, this all only have I seen, this only have I observed that God has made man upright in his own image, in his own likeness, upright, righteous, holy, pure, invincible, unconquerable, having dominion. Having total liberty, Lord, this only have I found that God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. But they have sought out many inventions. They did not continue. Man that was created in the image of God did not continue in that image, in that power, in that dominion, in that authority. Point number two now is the corruption of man, the painful corruption of man, and his godless living. Godless living. It happened in Genesis chapter 3. You can read that on your own. How the serpent came to Eve. And said, as God said, he brought doubt in the word of God. When Satan wants to catch anybody, he will bring doubt on the word of God, on the wisdom of God, on the will of God, on the way of God, on the power of God, on the breakthrough we have from God. He'll bring doubt to our faith in God. As God said, you know the story, man fell. And as a result of that fall, man became corrupt. Look at Genesis chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. It tells us here, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination, every thought, every plan of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually man became corrupt and that corruption led to quite a lot of things look at verse 11 chapter 6 of genesis verse 11 and the earth was corrupt before god the earth everyone on earth the man the woman the child the boy the girl the earth was corrupt before god and the earth was filled with violence. It's the corruption that brings strife. It's the corruption that brings fighting. It's the corruption that brings uh, violence. Look at uh, verse 12. The corruption that brings crime. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God brought some cleansing, forgiveness, recreation, and told them to sacrifice the lamb. 
And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And so a new creation was to start right there. And they applied the blood and they became free. Their sins were forgiven and they sang unto the Lord. The Lord has delivered us. But before long after that deliverance, they corrupted themselves again. Exodus chapter 32. In Exodus chapter 32, we're reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 32. And we're reading here from verse 7. It says in verse 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They started the whole cycle again. They were corrupt. God cleansed them, lifted them up, and said, go upright now. Before they went too far, they stumbled again, and they corrupted themselves. It's not man like that today. Oh, they said, educate the man. Once there's education, there's going to be a civilization. And so man began to go to school, and then he go to high school, and he go to college, and he go to university. And we've discovered now that the more a man is educated, the more the devil in him is brighter, and is more cruel, and is more corrupt. And the way they know that even though there should be progress, there's no progress, there's, re there's retrogression, and there is corruption. And so God said, I cannot bear them. Look at verse 31. In verse 31 of that uh, chapter 32, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have sinned a great sin, and they have made gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. You see, when you are cleansed, when you are converted, when your life is turned around and you are transformed, your name enters into the book of life. And Moses said, I know my name is in the book of life. I know you called me. I know you converted me. I know you commissioned me. And I know my name is there. All these people have sinned against you. And now, forgive them. If you are not going to forgive them, take my name out of the book of life. What you are saying is, I don't want to get to heaven without them. I want them to get to heaven with me. And if you will not forgive them and take them to heaven, why am I in heaven all alone without the people that you have sent me to? Look at verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. When the people corrupted themselves, he drove them out of the Garden of Eden. When the people corrupted themselves, he drove them out of his presence. And today, as many as have corrupted themselves, they were converted before, they were cleansed before, they were children of God before, they were heavenly minded before, they were holy before, but now they have corrupted themselves. They are driven out of the book of life. They are taken out of the book of life. I pray that will not happen to you. If it has happened, you run back to Calvary, and then your name will enter once again in Jesus' name. The corruption of man, the corruption of man, the, debt, the debtiness of man, the defileness of man, the sinfulness of man, the defilement of man, and his godless living. Look at Psalm 14, Psalm 14, 10 and 4. And uh, we're looking at verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, they are corrupt. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Why did they say there's no God? They are corrupt. And it says they have done, they have uh, done, they, they have uh, declined away from the Lord. They have done abominable works. And there is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven 
upon the children of men to see if there were any that understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. That's verse 3. They are all gone aside. All together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That's why the Bible says, So have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Man has become corrupted. There is something peculiar to man. When man gets corrupted, look at what he does in Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 1, we're reading from verse 4. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors. They are corrupt, they corrupt their own lives, they're not satisfied that way. Because you see, when somebody has fallen like that, he becomes a slave of Satan. And he has the nature of Satan in him. When Satan fell, he came to earth to make Adam and Eve fall. When Satan became corrupted, he became a corrupter. And it says, all these people were reading about in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors. They are forsaking the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. They corrupt themselves. And then they begin to corrupt other people. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Children that are corruptors. The new God, that God created them. He created them in his own image. He created man in the likeness of the almighty God. But when they fall and when they corrupt themselves, here is what happened in uh, Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21, because that when the new God, they glorified him not as God, neither was thankful, verse 21, but became in vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Their foolish heart became darkened. Did they profess that they were corrupt? Did they say and accept they were corrupt? Did they confess they were corrupt? Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man to birds and to four-footed bees and creeping things. What's the Bible saying here? God the mighty, God the holy, God the pure, God the perfect created man in his own image. Man fell man became corrupted and what's man trying to do man is trying to create his own god man is trying to create god after the image of the corruptible man after the image of four-footed beast when god created man he created man like himself now man wants to create god and he has a god of indulgence a god who is able to behold iniquity and say god bless you no problem at all they create a god who accepts sin they create a god who is so loving he will not even correct he will not even demand confession from man they create a god who cannot punish sin because they want to be like god god you created us now we're going to create you it says in verse 24 wherefore god also gave them up to unclean and to uncleanness through the thoughts the laws of their own hearts and to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who change the truth of god into a lie 
they changed sound doctrine into false doctrine and they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator they, they worship and they serve the creature more than the creator for this cause in verse 26 for this cause god gave them up unto a vile affection and he, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And there uh, are, you know, women that say that they walk with their flesh. They walk for pleasure. And they sell their body for, me, for, for money. And they turn and they change the natural use of the woman into that which is against nature. In verse 27, and likewise also the men have been leaving the natural use of the woman burnt in their laws one toward another, man with man. Men with men walking that.